Hey, I'm Dukes on Twitch. If you want to support the channel and greensunsinit.com, you can find my Patreon, merch store, and single store where you can buy singles through TCG Player or Card Hoarder in the video description. If you want to get in contact, you can also find all that info in the description below for things like donation deck lists or just wanting to reach out. All right, let's get right into it. Hey team, welcome back to Dukes on Twitch. Let me quickly change this deck name because obviously we are on green white mav. There we go. Hey Maverick Joe and hey OG, welcome. All right, this is green white mav. Uh, haven't played green white mav in a little while, uh, which is pretty tough. Uh, a thrun emoji would be very cool. I, I should get someone to put together a thrun emoji because I would love to play a little bit more thrun. Uh, which could obviously fit in this deck, which is Green White Maverick, uh, a deck that hasn't seen a lot of play, mainly due to the uh, benefits of either splashing a third color, Red Blasts, Plague Engineers, things like that, uh, or just playing a Green White Depths deck with Red in the sideboard for Blast Effects uh, on a more competitive level. But uh, I do really like Maverick, and I love going back to the basics of Green White and seeing how it performs. And I wanted to try to build uh, with Solitude. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of Path to Exile in the board for a lot of these decks. And I think Solitude's a pretty nice card in Mav because we do have a lot of white cards. Uh, I'm not too sure on the count, but it should be okay here with the Once Upon a Times as well. Uh, we are running the one Sylvan Library. We are not running Sylvan Library uh, because of the main deck Spirits. So I have Tireless Tracker uh, as a way to hopefully get see if this works no usually when you double click on these they are uh, they come up but uh yeah relying on the sylvan library the ramen app for some card advantage obviously the mums can also provide that once is nice at filtering uh it doesn't provide card advantage but uh, it does allow me to go down to 22 lands uh i'm just playing the four dogs which is pretty normal uh three mums uh and then of course the the two knights and the three endurances so hopefully the once has come up nicely I like it with the Solitudes because it means that once does find removal, which is kind of cool. Um, so that is always nice. The Onces as well just make the opening hands a little bit better, uh, which, has, which is where I kind of like the Onces um, in regards to their role. Uh, Eldamri's Call is pretty cool because you can, of course, replace whatever is uh, Ghost Stretch Your Hand um, and you can search, but... Uh, yeah, the ones here allow me to play a little bit lower of a mana base uh, and also just hopefully keep that curve going well. Uh, I did want to try out Wilson, but I don't have a token for the free event, so I don't have access to Wilson online. Uh, so I'm going to try out Voice. Uh, I was going to try out Goyf, but I do like that Voice is also a white creature for Solitude. There's obviously a lot of uh, Exile in Legacy, but there are some games where I think Voice could be pretty cool. Uh, so we'll try that out. The board is, um, pretty combo heavy, which is fair enough. I think that Maverick really needs some help in games two and three versus combo, especially on turns one and zero and one. So the traps are really nice for, uh, having some play on the draw. The deafening silences are just great turn one plays. The force of vigors also come up. Uh, Teague is there as just kind of a catch-all. This deck isn't playing prismatic ending. So Teague against some of the blue white decks can really catch them off. Turns off prismatic. Jace, Supreme Verdict, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's hard to play around Dress Down, but we'll, we'll just hope. Uh, Council's Judgment as well, just kind of a catch-all from anything from Merktide Regent to Teferi to uh, some sort of artifact or enchantment. Uh, and then <laughs> the other card I want to try out is Burden Forge Tender, which is a pretty fantastic way to deal with things like Fury or uh, End the Festivities. Uh, also having Pro Red is really nice against the Mono Red matchup because I don't believe they have a way to deal with it. Uh, and also just, yeah, being a sort of mother five to four to five is pretty cool. Um, just want to, want to try them out. Would be kind of probably better in a Stoneforge Mystic build because then you can actually make them real threats. But, uh, the, the Forge Tenders can be, can be pretty cool in those matchups where I really want to have something for, um, yeah, for any sort of red sweeper effect. So we'll see how, how that goes. Yeah, the 3-3 split I'm a, I'm a big fan of as well. And last night in your 
build Joe, it was really cool to have access to both three and three because you're most likely going to have at least one in your opening hand. And that's exactly what you want against the deck. So we bring those in. So that's pretty cool. Ah, oh, Wilson isn't in there at all. Tough. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 a shame for sure that a lot of these cards are missing out on MCGO because they're exactly where they where people want to be playing them. So hopefully something changes with that, but until then, we'll see how this goes. Monogreen Depths and Vintage. Ah, oh, really, Justin? That's cool. I wonder if... Was it recent? Here it is. Shepherd, Crop, Reclaimer. Once, Scrying, Reclaimer, Force. Depths. Nice. This is pretty cool. Leylines, Force, Endurance, Oofs, Safekeeper, Charles, Seiju. Really cool. Because... Can you? You can't turn one because you need two lands in play. So like even like Dark Depths on Field, Lotus. If you played a black version, you definitely could because you have a uh, Hex Mage. But that is that is really cool. I'm a big fan of that. It's always cool to see Justin not only play a lot of kind of brews in Vintage, but also do well with them. No fast bond plan. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, one big advantage that I love from uh, from Green White Mav is the uh, the double basics. So two forest, two planes, which is really nice against wasteland decks. Really nice against blood moon decks, back to basics decks. Just nice to make sure that your mana's on point because if you struggle with your mana on Mav and fall behind, it just kind of snowballs into a uh, a pretty heavy loss. So. Hey, Yorg. Yeah, Stompy's, uh, Stompy's been tough. The uh, Fable and Fury have really changed that matchup. Because you obviously just can't rely on your uh, creatures getting there. Usually they had to like abrade or stomp. Sometimes we'd get to Fiery Confluence on your Mana Dorks, but the, uh, the free spell of Fury and then just playing something like a, a, a Rabble Master is pretty huge. Alright, on the play. Uh, and sadly, not a keep. Uh, the Wasteland is just gonna... Yeah. Uh, Wasteland again, and no Once Upon a Time. Interesting. Well. We have a Cradle Hand, and no mana. <laughs> uh, uh, no Once either. Tough. Oh my gosh. Alright, well. To be fair, not the worst for... Uh... Probably bottoming the voice. One, two. Hmm. I do like the swords. I think we can bottom the spirit. And then it's it's probably bird here. Play the mum or once first, then mum off the crackers. A hundred percent, Loma boy. It's just been um. Yeah, really busy, but uh, I do love streaming with you, and I do love streaming Loam, so we'll definitely have to get it together sometime. Hey, Jerry. Welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I think it's I think it's the bird here. Alright. Start with once. Oh, close. We'll take the Savannah. Uh... Because they know about it, I will play the Savannah and then play Mum. But definitely a tough start. Wow, Force Pick Schmirk Tide. Okay, so it's going to be Blue Red Delver. DRC. Pretty happy to Swords that. Okay. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hey, tough juke. Yeah, I was, I was actually watching uh, Strass before, which is cool. A third land was actually pretty cool here. I'm just going to pass with the Scrib Ranger open here. Scrib, obviously, quite nice against the uh, Delver. Oh, please go after the Savannah. These are like the little things I need to hopefully. Yes. So they have Delva. Do they have Days? They do. Yeah, they shouldn't hard cast Days. They should definitely just alternate cast Days. Oh, they will. Okay. Alright. Yeah, I assume they were digging for land, potentially. And maybe they just have an abundance of uh, EIs in hand, but... You never know. If this is Murktad, I'm pretty happy to untap and try to draw into a... Uh, second mana source. So I can play around days. Okay. If we find a green source, we can green suns for birds, which gives us mana, but also gives us a bit of a fog, which is nice. But not, not the start I wanted. But hey, who, who doesn't love a challenge? Didn't they have a Delver? Or did they... Oh, they exiled it. What did they exile it to? Oh, they exiled it to EI, that's why. Alright, here we go. Um... Hmm. I actually like just... What did they do with the Ponder? They chose to not shuffle. I'm pretty happy to go with the Spirit. My reasoning for that is, is that if we draw like a noble or a bird off the top, we can then save the, uh, the green suns, which just scales hopefully into a threat down the line. Interesting that they got the Mystic Sanctuary there. I'm not sure why you would f fetch for that right now, but who am I to judge? Another Spirit's actually pretty cool. Hmm. I'm going to try to get voice. I'm going to do this now as well. And I'm not going to attack here. I remember when, uh, yeah, uh, this was a lot 
Uh, I remember voices in Australia were like $60 each. It was crazy. And funnily enough, uh, for the set itself, interesting that they didn't want to attack there. They actually tried to pull that back, which is pretty interesting. Um, they were real. Ooh, that's pr they have one card left. Well, if it's if it's if it's days, it's days. But if not, this endurance is pretty huge. Wow. Uh, for a long time, Voice was the most expensive card you could pull from Dragon's Maze, and the second most expensive card was the token for Voice Resurgence at like four or five dollars. And then I believe under that was Rel Zarek, which is pretty hilarious. Yeah, Wilson is what I really want against Delva because um, it's a great two drop to throw into four, into our uh, like days on turn two, or if they hold up like Lightning Bolt, they of course can't do it through Ward. Uh, and then in like a Stoneforge Mystic build as well, you can you can pump up, of course, the uh, the power of it. So pretty sweet. It, yeah, very much on board with you, Loma Boy. Okay. Pretty happy to draw a card first, because if we draw into a two drop, we can still play it. Okay. Well, we can fetch Dried Arbor, which, which pumps up the elemental, which is cool. Sadly, we can't beat the bolt, so that just happens. So if they don't hit creature or artifact, we could potentially trade a dried up with this DRC. They only have one card in hand. Oh, they're going to go to combat? Okay. Um... See if we can trade. Nice. Okay, empty board. Okay, on top of three mana. Not what I want. card for them. Most likely force if they played the land. Uh, I will still play this. Hey Dark Poet Bill, welcome. Look, doing pretty well for a Mulder 4, let's, let's be honest. Wasteland's gonna be fine. Still just force in hand I believe for them. I will play this. Interesting. Oh. <laughs> Now that's a uh, that's a great feeling, like the downturn of like the Maldifor, but then the the upturn of like the win on the Maldifor, very cool. Uh, so Delva, 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 Delva. I like the Judgment. Uh, I do like both chokes, just so we can actually find hopefully one of them in a game. It's really these five. Uh, I don't like the Oof that does nothing. Uh, the Tracker is a little bit slow. The Knight of Autumn can come out. I usually take out the beast as well and just play on like a three drop basis. 
the tracker is just yeah a little bit too slow um endurance is nice roman up's really nice the solitudes are good I'm thinking it's just a once. Hey, said. Uh, in game one, or in match one, an upper game, which is nice. I think just taking out a once is better than taking out a land, because I really just want to make sure we don't have another uh, multi mole. But like three lands, one removal spell, a creature. That's, that's all I want for a five. Three lands, removal spell, boom, done. Keep. Nice. If only Dried Arbor was a green-white creature, that'd be pretty sweet. Ooh, Volk Pass. I don't believe they're going to be on a Stifle build either, so... Pretty happy here just to Wasteland in their turn. So at least if they have Stifle, they use the Manor in their upkeep. This is fine. It's kind of nice to force the Brainstorm as well. There are some thoughts here of dazing before they play a land, but... Um, the the upside of waiting is that we get to draw a card and dig one deeper, but I'm pretty happy just to, to once here. Um, okay. I think from a mana perspective, just getting on my... My mana would be nice. I would really like to get a basic planes, but I think this is pretty good. Haha, <laughs> very true, Shark. Okay, they found the fetch land. Swords. I'm pretty happy happy to run out the Dried Arbor here. See if they use some sort of removal on it. This could also make them think I have a weak hand. Nice. They're fetching here most likely to... Bolt the Mum. I'm just wondering if there's a case where I want to Solitude this in response. I think I'd rather see if we can just Swords it, and then maybe even get to a situation where we can just hardcast the Solitude. Yeah, this is all fine. Also, don't want to like preemptively try to like take them off Merktide. I'd rather just let them have it. Hey, JRE, welcome. Hope you're doing well. But yeah, you can definitely see why Windswept Heath would have been huge over the Weird Foothills. Just to play around Wasteland a little bit, probably just going to go for an end step Savannah into Swords. Delve is okay. Brainstorm. They are going to attack. I guess one thing I should have considered as well is that throwing away the Dried Arbor means they're no longer afraid of a fetch land and attacking into it. 
They kept doing Pyroblast, which is really interesting, yeah. Maybe they just don't have enough cards to bring out. I'm pretty happy to Solitude this right now. They're down to one card. And I have double swords anyway. Hmm. They've played a land for turn. I might actually just go for... Uh, Savannah here. And swords. Because if we just hit, like, lands, then we're going to be pretty happy to keep that Solitude. Hmm. What does it reveal? Scalding turn, okay. Do they fetch it away? I, I assume they fetch this away. Wow, they keep it. Interesting. So two cards, still one unknown. I'm also happy just to let the Delver hit me for one and then go after it. In end step. Because there's obviously bigger fish to fry here. Wow. But taking all pressure off the board is really nice. Cradle. <laughs> Alright, well, we're definitely playing it. That's actually pretty interesting, because if they play a creature next turn, we could potentially Solitude it, and then with the, tri with the uh, trigger on the stack we can tap the Cradle for two to once. Ponda most likely not a shuffle, unless it's just like land, land, land because of the two fetch lands in play. Wasteland. Alright. Float white. And this is a huge moment where Solitude's actually really relevant, which is nice. Oof. Plains is also great because it, it just gives me access to swords. Hey, Spider Space. Very cool to see you. Hope you're doing well as well. This could just be like a hardcast borrower. Oh, they're going to use Sanctuary. Interesting. Getting back the Brainstorm. Yeah, I'm okay with this. I'm not, I'm not at a position where I can just throw away the Endurance. Yeah, exactly. Um, like, we can do some pretty cute things as well. Like, if they play two creatures... Like, I I'm not a big fan of going after, like, the Cradle here. I think you can hold the Wasteland for, like, an actual land. Like, if I draw a Savannah and play it, then that's obviously much of a, a, a much better play. The only uh, nice thing about the Cradle is that w with my two Evoke creatures, I can play around days to some extent. But Cradle on the field with no lands in play is just like an Ancient Tomb at 2 life. Like, there's no real need to, to go after it. But it's tough. I mean, I love to say it. Rejuke did call. Uh, nice. Uh, Guy's Cradle, the most powerful card in Legacy. So maybe my opponent's just a big Reed Duke fan. <laughs> At least with Tomb you can go out on your own terms. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, DRC is going to be... Okay. The question is, do I want to once just yet? I think I'm happy to let this resolve. And then just swords it. This is fine. Reed does play Elves, so obviously Cradle is a lot more powerful in Elves, but... Not shuffle, okay. Shop. Sure. 
They're down to zero cards here as well, so... I'll let them see the top, but then we're going to fetch anyway. And then because of that, I'm probably just going to try to... Yeah, I think the best play here is to uh, fetch a basic once, and then next turn with zero cards in their hand. Or I guess they get they get one in upkeep, I can respond to the... I can't respond to the trick because I don't have three mana, but... We can kind of get this insurance into play most likely around something else. Now this is pretty interesting. What do I want? What do I want? I don't mind the Forge Tender. It's a little bit tough because we don't have a an extra white or green source here. So we have an extra, we, we have a pretty high chance of drawing into one. Hmm. We have time as well, so that's nice. We don't want spirit. It's a bit late for Thalia. So it's between Forge Tender. Forge Tender is pretty funny with Endurance though, but we do need a, a, a blue card for it, a green card, sorry. Scrib Ranger does give us access to double green if it lives a turn. I don't mind Scrib. I think Scrib's pretty cool here. Alright, so upkeep. Triggering the stack, I'm just going to cast this. Nice. They still have one card, so if they try to like bolt the uh, the scrib, we can just sword this in response, or in in their upkeep. Hey, clips, welcome. Hope you're well. Uh, I'm gonna allow this. I'm not going to fetch. Okay. So let's fetch. They have one card, so they... Oh, what's this? They're going to try to bolt the Scrib Ranger. They have zero cards left. Um. I will float a mana. And return this to get the extra mana, which allows me to swords and also knight, which is pretty good. I think knight's pretty good here. Savannah. Forest. Uh, I'm not too scared of Merktide. But... I like that Knight also just takes me out of being wastelanded out of my third mana again. Injurious is nice, but I'm not too scared of, uh, of Merktide. I think getting like a massive creature into play as just a two turn clock is pretty relevant. Like it's pretty much submerge or bust on the Knight. I mean, Knight's going to be bigger than any uh, Merc Tide as well, which is pretty cool. Alright. The big question is, if I don't draw a land, um, how do we go about the Endurance? I guess we just play it main phase one. Or another solitude. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm gonna endurance now. Because if they want a daze, we can just pay for it with the knight. They have one card left. 
Uh, but I don't want to make that bigger. So I actually just want to allow this. Yeah, so I won't target them to not build this. Attack for 11. Have the Endurance as a blocker and then also have Solitude as a backup. We're in a, we're in a pretty nice spot, so... Pretty nice to take down game one. But nearly targeted them. Nearly targeted them, but... Yeah, pretty nice. Yeah, I thought my opponent might have been uh, holding a, a Force of Will, and that's why they just wanted to get to 5 mana, but obviously not. And at least once you have enough lands in play, you can start dazing them back to your hand, just to like throw them away to a, a Brainstorm. But that's pretty nice. Nice start. Phil. Hmm. Uh, an interesting hand. Two pieces of interaction. We have all the mana we need. We have Endurance and Beast. I'm not too sure what Phil usually plays though. I feel like he's a control player. Just gonna have a quick look. Naya Depths was their last deck, which is interesting. I don't I don't mind this. Starting on the Wooded Foothills. I mean, Once Upon a Time is still a live draw as well, which is pretty cool. Hey, thanks, OGC. All the best. Enjoy your flight. And good luck. And good luck. <laughs> oh, um, that's actually pretty nice. Planes? Forest. Spirit. Nothing. I don't want to show the wasteland just yet, which is why I didn't go planes into wasteland. I'd love for this scolding time to turn into a dual land. Tundra. Bauble. Okay, maybe a kitten deck here. They're going to target themselves. Interesting. See if they want to fetch or not. Bauble, nice, because it does play around the, uh, the spirit pretty well. Um... Here I'm just going to attack first without playing the Wasteland. Wow. Surely it's not... No, because they drew off the Bauble, so it can't be Terminus. It's just going to be... Mum first. Wasteland. And then pass. Swords. Uh, I'll let that resolve, and then we can wasteland. This windswept teeth is going to get a savannah as well. Basic. Okay. Showing weakness, old Phil. <laughs> Probably not. I think we're going to get wrecked, but we'll see. Do you think people calling Green White Depths Dep Green White Depths Combo Maverick is fair? Uh, I would say it's one of the fairer Magic decks because you do have a fair side to the deck. Um, it does have a combo finish, but I would say it's fairer than something like a mid range deck like Aluren or Food Chain, which kind of have it as a, a backup plan. But yeah, I would say it's not too unfair. I would say there's a, there's a lot of ways to deal with it. Prismatic ending. Green suns. 
Um, okay. I don't mind green suns here for voice. There is a uh, also hold up endurance to play around like Snapcaster Mage, but I think getting a, a, a beater in player in voice is, is okay. Hey Strass, a huge thank you. Hope you're doing well. Uh, how did you go on your stream? And what did you play against? I saw you, of course, playing against uh, Moon, which is pretty tough. Got the 5 0. Very cool. Very nice. It's tough because, like, Teferi here bounced the voice into. Oh, they do have the Snapcaster. Ooh. Well, then. Do I want to keep up? I think I allow the trade. Yeah. Hey, Spy Man. Welcome. Mum. Yeah, I don't mind mum here. How did Joe list go? Uh, 4 1, which is nice. Going down to move Moon Stompy, um, but getting up a, a, a fair few decks, which is nice. It's tough. Mentor's not too bad here because we do have the uh, swords in case they have something else. No. They have three cards left. Definitely just going to go for an end step swords. Uh, what did you play against, Mark? Okay. Opponent obviously trying to find force here. Which is pretty high, they haven't seen one yet. Echo, welcome. Well, they have one card left, so we're just going to go for Beast here. Start getting in. Beast is pretty nice against the Mentor. Storm's going to be okay. It's tough if they have Ponder as well and then attack, because even blocking a Monk means that they could Swords the Mum, which does save the Mum because you can protect the Mum, but then the Questing Beast trades with a 4-4 token, which isn't great. So if they attack here, I kind of just don't want to do anything. Kitten. Second endurance.
They didn't have a shuffle effect, which is relevant. Narset. Uh, this is going to be fine. Target the snap. Snap targets brainstorm. We can respond with endurance. Target them. This is uh, going to be tough if we don't find a removal spell soon. Scrib Ranger is pretty sweet because Scrib Ranger would allow us to give pro uh, to both. Blue and white on the endurance and get in for lethal. Oh, they get to bounce the Nars set and just keep finding stuff. Tough. Mox Amber. Yep. Yeah, cats are really powerful here. Hey TW, welcome. Yeah, I don't really understand, for sure. I think the cat will stick. It's just like a really good like four mana win the game, which is kind of where you need to be, like sneak attack, natural order, cards like that, Aluren. Yeah, and there's a lot of different decks that it fits in, whether it's combo or just like value, where this seems a bit more value, but it still has like Mox Ambers and, and Displacer Kitten and probably Teferi as like a, a win con. Boxing Ring? Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it fights up to one target creature you don't control at the same mana value. Interesting. That's cool. Hmm. 
yeah so now they have like the combo and i assume that a swing with everything once the monk tokens are bigger just to get through um enough but we can definitely see how he would sideboard for this i like the chokes and the teague and the judgment i'm not sure on the force of figures but potentially at least one back to basics is still just a card that i'm not a big fan of and it looks to be just blue-white. But yeah, even here they can, yeah, uh, make these three just up to 20 and then swing with all and we can only block two. Solitude still seem fine. Um, I don't mind going down on a wasteland, a bird for two chokes maybe not the wasteland actually I don't mind going down on a bird I don't mind going down to one night I still like the oof mums are good swords are still great I could see the cradle being cut but with Teague in the deck it's kind of nice it's most likely these four potentially force but Probably don't need the force. Maybe Oof is overkill as well. It does kind of stop the combo. They're all also playing baubles, so. Yeah, Deafening Silence is interesting as well. If that's how I want to attack their, their game plan. Deafening Silence also just from turn 2 stops like Cantrip into removal spell. I could see the Wances coming out. It's just like fluff. Maybe like 2 Deafening Silence. I don't mind this. Yeah, see how this goes. Hmm. No white no uh, white man is really rough. But we have some time to draw into it, but I I don't think we can keep this. Yeah, I think I think Deafening Silence is a bit of a trap, but it'll be nice to show that it's a trap. <laughs> so we can uh definitely rule it out. Uh okay. Put back the Solitude here. Potentially the Oof. Depends on my turn 2 play. I think it's just the Solitude. The tough thing about Thalia here is that it makes Choke a turn later. So. I think if they Swords the Mum though, I'm just going to go for turn 2 Thalia anyway. That's true, Teferi does clear it. I think maybe Deafening Silence here will just be exiled to Incoming Solitudes. Opponent goes to five. Wow, nothing. Well, I'm pretty happy just to uh, Thalia in that case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Council's Judgment is old school, but it just does what I want so well in that it removes any sort of troublesome permanent in front of me. Bauble's okay. Bauble costing the one man is pretty nice. But this is definitely a matchup where I just want to make my land drop, so hopefully we just hit kind of runner runner land.
Yeah, Teferi is pretty huge. I think if there is a game three, we'll definitely look at taking out that, uh, those deafening silences. Once isn't too bad either. I think I will just bring in the once. All right. One time, one time deck land. Oh, so close. I actually like attacking with both here. Um, and while it tapped out, potentially just endurancing it now. To turn off like them getting value off a of force of vigor. Uh, force of uh, will. Potential there as well, just to draw a card and see if we hit a white card for Solitude on, on Mentor. Because Mentor is really scary without a, uh, a way to deal with it. Nothing. Interesting, what does that mean? Hmm. Is there a world where we attack with the Thalia and the Endurance, and if they block the Thalia and then spend two mana to pump it, we then just get to choke them? They have, they'll have one mana up, but... Could also preemptively play the Spirit, but I kind of want the Spirit for the Solitude. I think I'm happy with that play. I don't really want to tap the mum. There's also a world where I just give the mum pro white here because they can't swords me so maybe if they get to untap with swords they go after the mum like the the, the thali is an ongoing one tax the choke here would be a, a two tax but maybe that's just incorrect if this was my line i should have just actually done this now but at least if they force this paying the one we can bait them into not having a force for the choke and now I should give pro white no 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 because no. I obviously want to just let it go through. Oh, they could just block with the monk tokens instead. Hopefully not. Hopefully they block with the mentor. No, the monk tokens will still kill it. Ah. Oh. Hmm. They can double block, that's fine. We kill one. Thalia dies. And now... Yes! <laughs> Little wins. Little wins. But still, something here like land into swords on mum is, you know... The choke only does so much with the mentor already in play.
Hmm. Yeah. Oh, they go after the endurance. Interesting. Okay. Nice. Um, what do I want to do here? I think I just want to green suns for... Probably a knight. Let's have a quick look. Okay. Um, Tireless Track is also pretty strong for any land drop. Scrib Ranger is kind of cool. I think it might just be an Endurance, but... I guess Tracker does get back... Uh, Ramanap gets back the, the Canopy, which is kind of cool. Tracker relies on land drops. Knight's just a good, solid card. Hmm. Tracker? I guess, like, Tracker is just all upside, because if I draw a creature off the top, it's great. If I draw a removal off the top, it's great. If I draw a land now, Tile's Tracker is also quite good. Excavate is also just a card a turn with the canopy. Ramanap's a little bit awkward to attack with, though. Maybe not. Tracker is for this matchup, so let's just go with Tracker. I think that's that's a pretty good card. We haven't hit a fetch land yet either, which is pretty nice. Fetch land, knight. Okay, still pretty good. Now we're looking really strong. Solitude. Okay. Um. We took out the Cradle, so let's just go for Windswept Trigger. Fetch. Savannah Trigger. Yeah. All right. Choke got there. Uh, I think, yeah, Deafening Silence is a bit of a, a trap. I, I don't mind the extra... Uh, mana on the play, but maybe it's just the extra onces that I want. Once is cool because it can dig. Especially for removal as well in Solitude, I think that's actually really beneficial. I guess Mindbreak Trap is- oh uh, no, because with Teferi in play, Trap does nothing, so. I think Trap is a trap, I think Deafening Silence is a trap, I think I should display the mid-range plan and hopefully get there with some hate. That's just- that's just how it goes. Ah, oh, I didn't actually realize that I had the Uf in play as well, so I couldn't actually draw from the tokens, but... Yeah, I think- uh, I guess the- yeah, the Knight itself can just get through a bunch, so. We're looking okay. Um, we are on the draw with a one lander. We have double green suns and once. I don't mind this. We could have solitude our own oof. Very correct. There we go. So they went to six. They chose not to shuffle. Teague, right. Start with once. 
Oh, we find a planes. Okay. Play this. Play this. Pass. Chose to not shuffle. Hmm. Now that's pretty interesting. I think I'm just going to pass with the Scrib Ranger up, which can't be hit by Teferi. We can also just kill a Teferi. Because we can, uh, if they try to bounce the Dry Double, we can just return it with Scrib Ranger. I could also Green Suns for Voice. Could just play the Knight. I'm thinking of End Step Swords here, so I'm just going to pass the Scrib Ranger up. to tick up now yeah oh we could draw a questing beast oh we could just draw the land here play beast and attack the to fairy uh, attack them attack to fairy and then trigger beast hitting the Teferi. Nice. That that turn worked out really well with the uh, Teferi having to tick up and then the questing beast just taking it off the field. Mentor is fine. Okay. I'm going to start with attacks. Green Suns for voice. They're going to brainstorm. I think in response to brainstorm with two cards left, I'm just going to Swords the Monk. But I could just wait to see if they counter the, the Green Suns. And then Swords the Monk. I 
it's a little bit of re le uh, relevance with giving them like the extra life from mentor but i think i'd rather see what they do with the brainstorm Do force it. Alright, well now I'm pretty happy to swords this. Force a negation as well, interesting. That does play around Gadduck Teague, which is pretty cool. Alright, let's uh untap this. Uh we haven't played a land for turn. play this which means now we can hold up endurance in their turn if needed just hard cast because we can float two off this this is fine Don't attack. Alright, one. Untap. Oh. Uh, I guess we can just return this forest. That's pretty nice. I will start with Teague. Swords on Teague. Interesting. Okay. Does that mean they have like a Supreme Verdict? Potentially? They're triple blocking. Okay. I mean, they have to have something because we have five next turn. QB has been pretty phenomenal this game. They did swords the Teague, so I feel like they have like a Jace in hand potentially, which isn't great because the Jace bounce questing beast just allows us to replay it and then attack for five still. Khan. Okay. I didn't see that. What does Khan do here? They're down to one card, but they can't... They can't... They're at five. But they can't go infinite with Kitten because they're going to die this turn. I know the combo, but it's irrelevant because we just take them out. Nice. Really tough. Hmm. 
Beast that game was, uh, I mean, Beast in that whole matchup was fantastic. Beast against Mentor is usually pretty nice. Really forces them to have something in hand at instant speed to even be able to block. And obviously a ton of things to be able to, uh, to kill the Beast. Nice. Nice to uh, start off on a high. Yeah, I thought it. I thought a, a verdict was coming as well because of the Teague, but potentially, the uh, the triple block on the um, endurance made me think that unlikely because they probably just if they have a if they have a uh, a sweeper they just put one in front of the endurance if they don't want to take the hit and then just untap attack with their mentors get in some damage and then just verdict the board. Yeah, that's fair. I think maybe potentially they thought I might like give them a turn by attacking the Khan. Maybe that was their play. All right, funny man. Um. Okay. Turn one bird, cradle, shenanigans. City of Traders. Charles for one? It's okay. Hmm. I don't mind Knight just take out the Chalice here. Hmm. The question is do I even care about the Chalice? Do I want to save the knight for something like if they have the, uh... Like, if this is Mono Red Stompy and they go Goblin next turn, I don't really mind because we have Endurance to block the, the token. And then we can actually hard cast Solitude the following turn thanks to Cradle. Green Suns for two doesn't do too much either. It does turn off like it gets collect oof, but I think I will just hit the chalice. Like play what's in front of me. Ooh, okay. Interesting. Eldrazi, okay. At least Mattery Shaper is when it dies. Now what do I want to do? One, two, three, four, five. I think it's just hold up Solitude. I probably don't even want to attack into this Mattery Shaper. Yeah, I will. Yeah, just keep... Oh, no, but the Cradle! The Cradle! That's all good. Uh, I think in that case, then, we're just going to pivot around to Green Suns for Knight here. Because getting Knight online is just huge. Wall is dust. Okay. Okay, this is fine. There's no point floating mana, but I will. Uh, I'll hit the temple 
as it actually taps for mana as well. Two, three, four, five, cool. But this is a exact matchup where Knight is obviously fantastic, but you don't need uh, a large majority of them. Okay, you get a Endurance. Oof. Alright, well. It's pretty good. Oh, Eldrazi Post. Okay. Um. Hmm. No blocks. I'll definitely fetch. Uh, I'll just get Dried Arbor, I think. Maybe not. No, we'll just go for Savannah. Okay. Well, they've definitely hit their land drops. I don't mind going one in the air. Okay, two mana available. Come on, Slot Splashes. <laughs> uh, uh, so they go up to 15 and then they take 15. Nice. Oh, they got a 16. Three plus. Yeah, come on, man. Do your math. Oh, okay. Oh, no! 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 Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, this could turn into a real... Yeah, this is going to get tough now. Lol. Oh, no. Damn, they beat four wastelands. That is crazy. Yikes. Yikes. Well, the Arbor wouldn't have done much against the, uh, the Endbringer. I guess that is the extra damage. Yeah, that is the extra damage. Brutal. Brutal. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Man, that was, uh, that was really impressive from them. Maybe there's another way. Maybe there's another way. All right, uh, spirits, probably out. We like the forces. I don't mind the council's judgment and the Teague. Teague mainly for all his dust. Uh, the Thalias are also pretty relevant. Actually, the Mums are pretty relevant, but they're probably playing Dismember, so I don't mind, like, some number of Mum, potentially. Hmm. Hey, Dread. A huge thank you for the Prime sub. Nine months is very cool. Damn, it actually came up. The Arbor was... Ah. <laughs> um, Green Sun, Solitudes, Forces... Interesting beast. Force mainly for our uh, pithing needle. And like a sorcerer spyglass if they play that. Let's just keep the mums in for, for dismember. I don't mind that. They also can attack, so. Um
Okay. Bit of a slow hand, but um, having like additional ways to deal with a Thought Nazi is pretty nice. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a great uh, a great learning. Hmm. I'm not gonna use that just yet. I do like taking out the Ancient Tomb. Awkward with Tegan play. Uh, we just want to hold up. Endurance here. Potentially even endurance ourselves and then shuffle the sword and the wasteland back in. Yikes. Hmm. Now we have some thought. So I, I think it's uh, cast Endurance and then Solitude the Thought Knot. And then they take either Green Suns or the card off top. If they take the Endurance here, we kind of just uh, time walk, walk ourselves. I think I want to get the Endurance in and then Solitude. They currently have three mana available, which isn't too much. And we're attacking for five. The Swords puts them back to 20, so we have a four turn clock in play. I know the green suns would actually be the best draw. Okay. I guess they can oh, they they take the the green suns, which we can't actually cast. Which is funny. Uh let's draw. Wasteland is nice. But right now we're probably just gonna keep it. I don't think they're playing crop rotation, but they definitely could be, which is a reason to take out the Yav just now. I could also take out one of the posts so that they don't have access to... Like, uh, there's, a, there's a few things to think about here because uh, untap in any land is just Thought Knots here. I think taking them off the Yav is fine. But it could come back to bite us if they do have Cloud Post. I thought not. Yep. Um, I'm just going to fetch now. Probably for the Dried Arbor. No. No, we didn't learn from last time, so... Hmm... Hmm. 
Oh, we find the oof. That's pretty nice. I think that's better than solitude. Yeah. Just to turn off those grims. Okay. Oh, no, the... I wonder if I attack with the Teague here. I think I do. Six mana. Feels like Endbringer. Oh, Smasher. Okay. But no attack. Take them off the tomb here. <clears throat> and then just hold up the knight as a, a bigger um, creature than reality, Smasher. End step wasteland. Sure. Just another full chalice for one. Okay, that's fine. Untap first, see what we draw. Green Suns, perfect. Um, let's go one, two, three. Sack this for a wasteland, tap a wasteland. Green suns for ramen up, get back a wasteland. Hit the eye, hit a glimmer. Nice. Okay. I, I, there was a point there where I thought it was turning towards them, especially with the Thought Not Seer, but thankfully we had some pretty nice outs. So, oof. Um, what do we got? What do we got? I think we're just going to run this back and, and see how it goes. We did see Warping Whale, which is interesting. Does counter uh, Green Suns as well, which is relevant. Hey, XJ. Welcome. Uh, this hand's pretty nice. I'll keep this. Having the, uh, the Wasteland here is nice. And then also just Force for our uh, Pithy Needle, if relevant. Post-pass? Alright. Hey, Sia. Thanks for the uh, follow. Hope you're doing well. Temple? Sure. Can we find another Wasteland? No, but we do find a knight. Um, there's no play around Dismember. Because we currently have one land in the bin. If we fetch, fetch, the knight will still be a 5-5. Five five. So I think just for mana considerations, I'm happy just to play Savannah, play Noble. Okay, that's fine. Huge. Definitely getting some dismember vibes, but... No, okay. Well, getting the knight down is big play. Grim's fine. I kind of just want to take this out right now. I think it's worth it. 
Uh, actually, I can hard cast it next turn and keep an endurance and still wasteland because we have a land drop which is four mana and then we can still wasteland them, which is pretty nice. So I think we'll just do that. Solitude. They float three, potentially for a warping whale. Yeah, that's fine. All right, buddy. Erborg. Could just be Smasher. Yeah, alright. The race is on. That's pretty nice. Um, no one. Yeah, pretty tough for them. I assume they just had three big spells in hand and didn't have another land, but... A tough one for sure. Alright. 3-0, which is nice. I don't know what Owl House is, but it's been too long that I'm kind of scared to ask what it is. Hey Bonja, hope you're well. Thanks for the follow. I know that XJ fan... XJ Cloud is a fan of House Owl, I think it's called. I feel like it's a genre of metal. Definitely sounds like a uh, a music genre. What do you listen to? Oh, Owl House. It's a, it's a reggae metal. <laughs> hey, Rama, welcome. If you will. Everyone should watch Owl House. Great show. Let me have a quick look at what it is. Owl House. Is this it? <laughs> that was a terrible track. I apologize. I apologize, John. All right, William. Let's see how this goes. Uh, I'm pretty keen to keep this. Savannah Noble into turn two spirit and wasteland potentially. Opponent kept seven. This is fine. A land is perfect because I'm pretty happy just to wasteland them here. What are they going to do with a mountain? Do they have double spirit guide? No, I thought not. <laughs> uh, Plains is nice here. And then I think we're just holding up Endurance. I kind of like that they're trapped under underneath their own Trinosphere, which is nice. <laughs> ah, John, too kind with the gifted subs. Too kind with the gifted subs. I hope you're doing well. 
Thank you very much. Um, no one. Yeah. So this is kind of how you win usually against this deck. But thankfully, we get to try out our Burden Forge Senders, which I think John would be so happy to see in this deck. <laughs> uh, so we want the Burdens, mainly for Fury, but also just really good against the, the Goblins. Well, pretty good. Uh, Judgment, the Forces. I'm not sure about Teague. I, I don't think we need the Teague, especially when we have our own Green Suns and Forces here. It's really a lot of the, the smaller stuff that I'm worried about. Uh, the spirits can come out. The tracker is just not really where I want to be. The endurance can come out. Voice is okay. Once is a nice collect. Oof is good. It could just be a land. I could see Cradle coming out. Thalia is still strong with First Strike, and, and taxing them to some extent. Two kind XJ. And hey, if you're watching and you're not following the channel, definitely consider following. I'm uh, pretty close to the 3k mark, which is pretty nice. I believe it's 10 left. 10 left now, thanks to Sam. Big thank you. Hmm, I, I think it is just a Cradle. We don't usually get to go wide. Would love to see a basic in my opening hand, and a mana dork would be just really nice on top of that. Hmm. <clears throat> The thing about this hand is that it just dies to Blood Moon and it also just dies to a Goblin as well that I don't think it's good enough. I think it's a pretty nice hand in the blind, but I think against uh, like a, a Chalice start turns off Mum and also like we can't green some Sons for Dried up with this hand if they don't Chalice. I think I'd rather just Mulligan once and try to find a better setup. Uh, this is interesting. We do have double Fetch and double Bird, but if they have Chalice again, then it's pretty tough. Also, it doesn't really beat Blood Moon, it doesn't beat Chalice, it doesn't beat uh, Trinisphere, which is pretty hard to do anyway. I guess Trinisphere allows us to fetch for a basic, which is kind of nice. I think this matchup is definitely about card quality, not card quantity, so there, there, there technically is a, a, a much better 5. And I think if I kept this, I would probably bottom the Savannah. What do you think, chat? Hey, JR, thank you very much. Uh, I don't have water, but I do have... Cold coffee, which is pretty much the same. Is this a mull? Like, okay, let's, let's look at the... Let's look at the, um... Let's look at the turn one plays. Magus, Moon... Chalice, Sphere, um, Fable, Goblins. This hand isn't great against Magus. It's not great against Moon. I guess we have the Solitude for Magus. We have the Solitude for Goblins. I, th I think it's a five. I think it's a five. Okay, we've got the basic. We have this, which is nice. I'm going to keep this. Bottom the... Scrib and the uh, probably the voice here. Definitely interesting. Hey, basic swamps. It is just green white. Yeah, I think it's the voice. Oh, okay. That's fine. We get our basic, which is nice. Green-white has been pretty nice so far. Um, I found that 
the it just is so much more straightforward than a third color, which is cool. Uh, Trinisphere is going to be fine. I actually am just going to search for the planes now. I don't really want to draw planes. I'd rather draw a wasteland if possible. Okay. Hmm. All right. This is where we really need to find a, a force of vigor pretty quickly. We do have three. It's not too bad either. Uh, I don't mind voice here, as it allows us to just get another creature as well, which is pretty cool. I think voice is better than Thalia. Okay. Interesting. I think here it's the Rabble Master that I'll block. Oh, they're going to attack with it. Interesting. Wow. Okay, well, pretty happy to get the free block here. Endurance. That's pretty solid. I actually think Endurance here is better than Thalia. The only thing Thalia stops under the Trinisphere is like uh, Soul Land into two three drops back to back. I think I'm okay with holding back on the Endurance. Endurance also making this a 2-2 to block the Rabble Master is pretty, pretty nice. Warboss. Alright. Wow, still nothing. Still no attack with the Rebel Master, he's just buying us a lot of time. Block a 1-1. One, one. Look at 1 1 and these are all 1 1s. Nice. Wow, on top again? Savannah, sure. Uh, do I want a green suns here for 3? What does that get me? A 4 4 knight? Um, we could also green suns for. I got a lot of tabs. I got a lot of tabs open. Hmm. I don't mind taking out the chalice for one with Knight of Autumn. I think it's Knight of Autumn take out the chalice. I mean, turning on these two is huge. If we just get one more turn. Oh wow, no fury? Okay. I mean, we, we, we get to block pretty favorably here. I, th I think it's just a... Uh... 
this in front of a 1-1 one, one because the Knight of Autumn's going to die to make this a 2-2 two, two with one damage on it. And then we can just block here. Like these line up really well. Do they have a post-combat fury potentially? No. Wow. Ah, uh, it's still three mana. Um, that's okay. I think in that case, because of Fury, I actually just like Burden Forge Tender here over the Sword Supply shares. I mean, voice in this matchup has been pretty nice. It's nice to have double basics of, of both the so two forest, two planes to be able to cast it, but just the value of having a 2 2 that trades with goblins and then a 1 1 that gets bigger after is just really nice. Okay, Fable's going to be okay. Block, block, block. All right. Oh, Wasteland's pretty huge, I think. Hey, Basic Swamps. I haven't been playing Seeds because I just like the flexibility of uh, Force of Vigor. But if I really expected 8 casts, I would definitely consider Seeds. Do I want to save the Wasteland for Den of the Bugbear? I don't think I do. I think I'd rather just keep going wide with creatures. Mono white painter. That's cool. Does it play uh, Oswald? I assume it plays Oswald. That card's pretty powerful. Discard double chrome mox. Okay. I can't double spell just yet, but I, th I I think it's better to wasteland to keep them off the ability to just keep getting keep getting wider. But here, like, we get to go, uh, 2-2, two, 1-1, two, one, one, one. Like, Burden Fortune Tender here, I feel like, just doing so much work, and e exactly why I want it. It's a great fog, and also just keeps Fury off the table. Okay. I think here I do want to take out one of these. But this is also concerning, so... Hmm. I think I just take out the war boss, but... So this um can copy. Create a token that's a copy of another target non-legendary creature, except it has haste. So it creates more copies of these. Can I attack? Maybe I can attack here. What if I play Mum? Attack with the 6-6 six, six if I fetch up to Ride Arbor. 
Or is it too early? Putting them to six also turns off these ancient tombs a little bit. Especially with Mum on board. I think that is the play. Because now if they don't block, the Mum next turn is just going to be lethal by giving Pro red. Fabled's fine. Yeah, now they just have to attack with everything. Yeah, so thankfully our blocks just line up really well. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. A little bit of patience. And it all works out. And I think also rewarded for mulling to five and kind of realizing that it's about the quality of the cards that you have, not the quantity. Especially in this matchup where you just need to have access to basics. So That's obviously very cool. <laughs> uh, too kind. DN solver, always. Decks felt pretty nice. Um, the ones that have been really strong are just keeping that opening hand uh, a lot more keepable if it's just like a one lander with like one mana dork, so that's been pretty awesome. I also have to run for an appointment after this, so hopefully this is a, a quick one. Yeah, definitely got um got some nice matchups. We played against Eldrazi, uh, blue white control with Displacer. Uh, we played against uh, blue red Delver with a multi four game one. We got there, which is very cool. Uh, and then yeah, got up against Red Stompy, which is cool. Anything I haven't liked? I don't think so. Um. It's, yeah, it's it's obviously only been a few times. It's tough because you, you do see a lot of the deck, which is nice. So, like, even, like, some of the one-offs, like, like Tireless Tracker, we, we did see, but... Um, the tracker's really there to just to have some way to gain some sort of card advantage without library in the deck, because we are playing the main deck Spirits, but... I could still consider one library in the deck over the tracker as a way to lower the curve a little bit, and... For the matchups where you have both library and spirit in play, usually the spirit is doing a lot more turning off your opponent's draw cards than your own ones, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, basic swamps, that's a Gav, that's a great point that Solitude just allows us, say in Death and Taxes, to actually make use of Thalia and Spirit. Um, but I, I did want some card advantage in the deck to um, pry off the, the card disadvantage of Solitude, but it's also just a castable card, especially in a deck with Cradle and so many creatures, like we have been able to just cast the Solitude multiple times this this league, which is really cool. <clears throat> hey, Brew. Thanks for the follow. Hope you're doing well. 2991 followers. Nine followers off the, the big three. Hey, Blind. A big thank you for the Prime sub. Too kind. Too kind. All right, Nooks on the play. And this hand is keepable. Yeah. I like it. Free ones and then acceleration. Hopefully just finding like a Thalia. Okay, we'll take the mum. <clears throat> hmm. I'm pretty happy to get the mum online here. Uh, it's it's tough, but I think because I've shown it as well. Yeah. Especially on the play. Hey, Ulsus. I definitely misspelled your name, but a huge thank you for the follow. Okay. Forest. Noble Pass.
This is check pile. Okay, well hopefully Wasteland's pretty good here. They go for Tundra. Brainstorm. Next time we get to Wasteland, attack with Noble, hold up once. Wow, double Brainstorm, just trying to like dig for a fetch lane potentially? Oh no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. Uh, okay. So against a deck like this, I'm going to assume Collector Oof is not good. I'm going to assume Choke's good. Probably the Council's Judgment. Uh, we'll go down on the Collector Oof. I'll go down on... A Mana Dork. And one Endurance. And we'll see how this goes. Choke seems really nice, especially if they're on four color. If we can go after their jewels that aren't islands and then hopefully choke them off the other ones, that would be pretty cool. But yeah, tough for them to uh, end step brainstorm, hit nothing and then untap brainstorm. Obviously dig a card or two deeper and, and not find anything. Hmm. Um, but yeah, going back to some of the cards in the deck, I think Voice has the um, the most to it. What's the word? Imp yeah, it has to do the most to impress me because obviously, like prismatic endings in the format, sorts of plushes in the format. Um, I like this hand, especially with the ones we have. Turn one noble, turn two spirit. Tracker is obviously quite good against these grindy decks as well. So, even like turn two tiles, turn three tiles, tracker play Dried Arbor. All right, they're multi six. Ponder. So, we get to draw and then. They chose to shuffle with their ponder. Let's see if we can find a wasteland here. No. But we do find a forest, which is quite nice. Hmm. I want to be patient with the choke as well and, and wait for a, a time where they're tapped out. Probably end step sword. No. Wow. The nice thing about this curve as well is the next turn we have Choke, and then the following turn we have Tracker. Island? <laughs> oh! Island? <laughs> Staticaster? Okay. Pretty good. Look, we're not... We're definitely casting this choke. Oof. Get in for three. They get to deal with the spirit, but then we get to play the tracker next turn with a fetch land. Oh, and Scrib Ranger. Wow. And there it is, my people. 
There it is. Very cool to see. Very cool to see. Nice. Haven't trophied in a while, so that's a pretty good feeling, especially with just a green, green white version. It's always nice to kind of go back to the basics of Maverick and and see how it goes. But obviously, my opponent pretty unfortunate there with that last one. I think if uh if if it actually went with like, uh like normal sevens, it would have been a pretty tough matchup, especially with Staticaster. But pretty cool to go from choke to trophy. That's that's for sure. But yeah. Uh, let's look at the list. List was pretty solid. I think all the cards that I added in did exactly what they wanted to do. So, Burden Forge Tender, great against uh, Blue Red Delver and also Prison, which we played against. The Once Upon a Times, great for just making sure your opening hands are a little bit more stable. Uh, the Double Forest, Double Plains matched up really well, which is fantastic. The Solitudes were great as well, um, just to have like a little bit more game against some of these, these bigger creature decks. It's also nice against Prison as well to take out uh, things like Megas or, or Goblins, which is cool, so that's pretty cool. Um, I still really like the Traps and the Deafening Silence. They didn't really come into play this league, but I think those six as combo hate pieces is just really nice to, to have in the deck, so... Um, yeah, really cool to be able to showcase that you can play, say, Green White Maverick instead of playing uh, Green White Depths. Um, but yeah, overall, the, the full deck did pretty well. That is it for me. I have an appointment to get to, but a huge thank you to everyone who came in and followed the new subscribers. Big shout out to XJ Cloud for the uh, gifted subs. Uh, and really nice just to see a bunch of you in chat that are usually here and cheering me on, talking Mav. It's always good to see. Uh, I'm gonna quickly see who else is streaming, but hey, if you wanna find me on YouTube, you can find me here, Twitter, of course, and there is a Discord, which is cool. Um, Let's have a quick look at who else is streaming. Hello, Newton. I couldn't ask for a better guy to raid. Um, if you don't know who Hello, Newton is, he is a very well-equipped Legacy Elves player uh, who, yeah, does a lot of really cool testing with cards like Snuff Out. Um, yeah, I think you guys really enjoy it, so... All the best, enjoy, and I'll see you next time. Uh, I'll be back on Thursday night uh, for a stream, so we'll see how that goes. But a huge thank you once again, and uh, yeah, enjoy Newton. <laughs>